Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, when it comes to phone photography, the iPhone 4 is arguably the lord of the land of the little lenses. But I'm not looking to start a fanboy war here. It's just a fact. It's the most popular mobile phone for photography in the world right now. The combination of surprisingly good camera hardware and a few truly superb photography apps has ensured its popularity even amongst some high-profile professional photographers. And to date, there really hasn't been an Android handset that can really compete. Some have pretty okay-ish cameras, but they still lag behind the iPhone in image quality. Until now, perhaps. I'm taking King iPhone head-to-head -head with the first serious challenger to the throne that I've come across so far. Sony Ericsson are looking to finally give Android users a phone with a camera capable of kicking a few teeth out of the smug grin on the iPhone. It's the Xperia Arc, and it's packing imaging technology specifically developed from Sony's own camera engineers, bred from their high-performance Exmor R back-illuminated CMOS camera sensor technology that they use in their very best Cybershot stills shooters and their Handycam line alike. And now they've built a compact version for their phones. There have even been strong hints that Apple themselves are looking to license this very technology for their next model of iPhone. But we'll take a photo of that bridge when we come to it. Let's just look at these two for now. First, we'll look at video, then move on to stills. In video mode, taken head-to-head -head shot for shot in bright daylight, it's a bloody close call. Both the iPhone and the Xperia Arc trade blow for blow. They both pull in video of 720p at 30 frames per second. The motion on the iPhone is slightly smoother, but the Arc, which features Sony's image stabilization technology, offers a much smoother handheld video, giving you a nice, stable, smooth and almost floaty movement from even a one-handed shot. Something the iPhone, which has no stabilization at all, just can't come close to. The iPhone's colors are much more saturated, but the Arc is better at automatically detecting the proper white balance. Look at the road surface in this shot. The iPhone sucks in more sharpness and detail, leaving the Arc looking a bit softer, but the Arc captures much more detail in the shadows that the iPhone just loses in deep shade. And speaking of shade, the main battle cry for the Exmor R sensor technology is its supposedly superior performance in low light. So I decided to take it to a place I know that is always dimly lit, but is also one of those places that always has people trying to take photos in. The Sydney Aquarium. This place has always been a challenge for cameras. The combination of low light reflections from the glass aquariums and lots of little critters constantly on the move make getting nice sharp and clear shots difficult. In these conditions, the difference in performance between the Arc and the iPhone becomes much more pronounced. The Arc focuses easier for a start. The iPhone also has an even more difficult time adjusting to white balance, which this shot makes pretty obvious. You'll also notice that the Arc is sucking in much more detail from the shadows. Looking at Donatello's shell here, you can also see that the Arc is picking up the texture and smoother color gradation as well. The iPhone is still pulling in a richer color saturation, but in these conditions, it's sacrificing a fair amount of detail to get it. There is noticeably more noise in the image from the Arc, while the iPhone is still producing noise-free video. And it's a tough choice between the two, because on the one hand, a noise-free picture is highly desirable, but you're losing a whole bunch of detail in that trade-off. So overall, it's a damn close call between the two. The difference in performance is pretty easy to spot side by side, but for every win by one side, it loses again on the next turn. However, the scorecard becomes a little more lopsided once we start looking at stills instead of video. All these photos were taken in the default automatic mode, but it should be noted that the Arc, being an Android device, offers a whole bunch more manual adjustments and control that the iPhone simply doesn't have at all. The Arc, overall, was smarter about exposure, offering a slightly wider dynamic range, and just like in the video mode, while the colors are less saturated, it retains much more detail and clarity in the shadows. The iPhone, however, does a much better job at close-up macro shots. It's also faster at focusing. The gradation and transition between subtle tones is noticeably smoother on the Arc as well, as you can see on the little stone skull here. As you can see in the clouds in this shot, the iPhone will also blow out the whites sooner than the Arc will. 
Taking us back into that dimly lit aquarium, you can quickly note that the iPhone and Xperia Arc are a world apart when it comes to correctly adjusting for white balance. In fact, when it came to capturing accurate colour, resolving detail, exposure and focus, there wasn't a single lonesome photo that I took in which the iPhone snapped the superior shot. It should also be pointed out that the Arc is an 8 megapixel camera to the iPhone's 5 megapixels, and while it's important to remember that more megapixels is not always better, the difference it makes between these two gadgets is very easy to see. Sure, the video mode was punch and counterpunch, but when it comes to snatching stills, the Xperia R kicked the iPhone in the nets, waited for it to fall over, then stood on its neck shouting boastful things and claiming to have had unsatisfying sexual intercourse with the iPhone's mother last night. So, here we have it. The Xperia Arc, the first serious challenge to the iPhone 4's dominance of phone photography. And frankly, it's about time. Thanks for watching, I'm Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.